Hey, welcome to the Fun Kids Book Club podcast. My name is Bex and today I've got a very special guest. It's returning champ of the book club. We've seen him a few times before. Stephen Butler is chatting to me about the fourth book in his Nothing to See Here hotel series. So let's find out what is happening in the newest adventure, shall we? I am joined down the line right now by official friend of the show. That's what we call him, Stephen Butler. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> I'm good. I'm very proud to be an official friend of the show. I do have uh, I have strict uh, qualifications for it. You've passed all the tests, so don't worry. Um, <laughs> which is great because you're back and you've brought an awesome, like seasonal appropriate book with you. The Nothing to See Here Hotel has got a fourth book out in the series, uh, Fiend of the Seven Sewers, uh, it, and it's such an amazing book. Can you tell us a bit about it? Oh, thank you. Yes, um, it's the fourth instalment, um, and it's a it's a big one. It's a big fatty. It's about twice <laughs> the size of book one. So there's plenty of adventure going on. Um, but yes, it's the first, um, it's quite a spooky one. It takes quite a scary turn, this book. And it's the first time that we leave the hotel. We see some other magical locations. We actually step outside of the Nothing to See Here Hotel. Well, I was going to say this to you because it is, uh, well, first of all, you're right, it is a big, but it's much bigger than the first one. I remember reading that one and this one, I was like, wow, yeah. he's, he's really <laughs> enjoying him, himself. But also the world has expanded. You're right, you're really kind of extending uh, even to the point where there's a little map at the front there just to prove where everything is in the world. That yes. must have been pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm a massive fan of maps at the beginning of books. When I was a little boy, it was one of my favourite things to be able to kind of plot where the story was going. So I insisted that this book had a map at the beginning of it. <laughs> I got a family tree at the, at the beginning of the last two. And I was like, now I want a map as well. <laughs> Did you send your orders to Stephen Lenton? Were you like, yes, I want all of these things, please? Absolutely. I said very strict instructions. <laughs> <laughs> so in, in this world that you've expanded, uh, Frankie, I don't want to ruin it too much, but Frankie has kind of been... Um, He's been kidnapped, hasn't he? And he's he's gone yes. to another part of his his world. Yes, I mean it's it's okay I, without giving too much away. Um, yeah, Frankie, right at the beginning of the book, it gets going quite quickly. Frankie is kidnapped from the Nothing to See Here Hotel and taken on a quite a long journey to a city in the sewers. Um, and yes, there's some pretty scary people waiting to meet him when he gets there. I won't. I won't give too much away. Mm -hmm. Um, in in the book as well, because I do love the hotel. Because I grew up, uh, my parents ran a hotel, so I do love this series just because it makes <laughs> me think of that. Um, it must have been quite fun though. Um, just to create more monsters as well, and there's more creatures in this book than ever before. Yes, I mean, there's all the old favourites. You know, I, I'm I'm slightly in love with the characters from the hotel, so I didn't want to get rid of any. Um, but there's plenty of new. Um, there's plenty of new people, good good guys and bad guys. So there 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 are new people to love and there are new people to hate. Um, and there's even a giant crocodile called Doris. <laughs> 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 because what book is complete without a giant crocodile called Doris? Well, finally, someone said what I've been thinking for the last five years. <laughs> finally, you've done it. Uh, you've also got, is it, is it Cudlump as well, the creature? Yeah, her name's Biddy Morky and she's a Cudlump, which is this enormous, they were the dinner ladies of the Dark Ages, so these enormous, big, cuddly, lovely things, and whole villages would go and have picnics on their bellies in the Dark Ages. I read that bit with her and I was like, oh, I want a Cudlump in my life. You could make a lot of marketing from this. If you got some cuddly toys going, I think there'd be a lot of people buying them. Yeah. <laughs> I want a cut lamp, definitely. <laughs> it's so awesome. And so uh, you mentioned as well, with you've got such amazing illustrations in the book. You've also got um, a competition winner as well, if we can look out for that too. Is that right? Yes. I mean, um, I think it's really important to keep kids engaged. I know that, you know, I was a really reluctant reader when I was a little boy. And so anything to catch kids' attention. So we did a competition before this book came out. Um, where kids could design a, a creature that would feature somewhere in the book. And so it becomes like a bit of a Where's Wally where you have to find it. But um, yes, and then obviously they get their fabulous creature drawn by the amazing Stephen Lenton, who does all the illustrations. Um, yeah, and there's actually, the, we've got we've got more competitions coming up on our, if you get on our Twitter feeds, if you keep an eye on Twitter, we've got more Halloween competitions coming as well. So yeah, we, we like to keep busy. Well, I did notice uh, at the end of the book, again, I won't ruin it, but it does feel very much like you've set it up for another adventure. Are we saying this is a series that's going to go on for a little bit longer? Oh, I certainly hope so. Um, I'm actually writing another, a totally different scary book for Simon & Schuster at the moment. Um <laughs> that will be out for next Halloween about theatre ghosts. But I can't tell you too much, but yes, it's about theatre ghosts. Um, 
But I certainly would love to return. Yes, I deliberately left it on a very big cliffhanger. So I would definitely love to go back and finish the adventure for um, the Nothing to See Here Hotel. Are you, I'm are always you thinking there, ahead. <laughs> well, that's, no, it's great. You must be their go-to guy for, for Halloween and for scary stories then. Well, I don't know, really. It was never intended. Um, the, it just kind of happened. Um, the the, the theatre ghost book was something I've been planning to write for years and years. It's been on my shelf. For, oh, um, it must be nearly 10 years. Wow. And finally, we just grabbed the opportunity um, to go for it. So, yes, it's certainly not the end of the hotel, but we're just pausing for a minute while I write my scary ghost story. Oh, man, I do love a theatre ghost. I am absolutely, yeah. <laughs> like, Troy Lane and everything like that, I'm fascinated by it. So I'll be... Uh... Yeah, exactly, me too. So in, in this book for Frankie, it's another big adventure and he's just such a cool dude, isn't he? He just seems really nice, just making friends wherever he goes and also pretty brave. Yeah, I think, I mean, Frankie is kind of everything that I'm not, I suppose, as a writer. I, I love the fact that Frankie really rolls with the punches. And he, yeah, he is very brave and he's always quite resourceful. Well, I think me as Stephen would be lying on the floor crying. Um, <laughs> and yeah, it's just a really, exciting, I really wanted to take uh, Frankie about and I love dropping little Easter eggs in other books. So um, he goes to the city of Gradibash in this book. And actually, it's mentioned in the book before. I always get a little something in. So it just ties in and you can go back and look through the books and go, oh, yeah, I saw that in that bit. So, yes, um, if you go back through Seeing is Believing, which is the third book, you can find um, mention of the city of Gradibash, which is a city in the sewers. So it's in there somewhere. Oh, that's really fun. I mean, as as uh, we've said, this is the fourth book in the series. doesn't necessarily mean you have to read the first three, but I guess it does help, doesn't it? It certainly helps just in knowing the characters. But um, I mean, it's quite nice because it's in first person. Frankie kind of catches you up as you go along anyway. Mm -hmm. So, yes, you can. I mean, I would love it if you start a book one and go all the way through, but there's nothing to stop you grabbing one that takes your fancy. Okay, now, because it wouldn't really be an interview without a quiz, I've made a special one up for Stephen. Let's do it right now. Stephen, I'm so sorry about this, but I'm going to have to apologise. I've, I've made a mini quiz. I always make a quiz for you. And oh, I no, I love like... the quizzes. I love the quizzes. <laughs> I feel bad that I'm just forcing you into a quiz again. <laughs> but seeing as you've mentioned you are kind of the king of Halloween, uh, I thought I'd just do a mini <laughs> Halloween quiz with you, if that's all right. Fabulous. Go, go for it. I mean, this is this is basically Halloween now. So I'm going to start you off super duper easy. I mean, if you don't right. get this, then I'm going to be cross. Uh, first of all, what date is Halloween? The 31st of October. Smashed it. Straight. Great way. Good. Um, <laughs> I had to really think then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're going to have fun with the rest of them then. Um, before pumpkins were carved, what other vegetable was used? Oh, that's a good one. Um, I don't know, but I would guess something big and uh maybe uh marrow oh close I, I might be able to give you that it's a turnip so yeah pretty pretty oh. close really same, same thing yeah. root, root vegetable eat. Root vegetable, yeah as, as long as you didn't say like you know tomato we'd be fine um yeah. <laughs> which country celebrates day of the dead instead of halloween ah mexico yes so if you came to my flat my flat is covered in Day of the Dead Skulls. I'm obsessed with the Mexican Day of the Dead, so I know that one. That one's easy. <laughs> oh, Rick, uh, just a side uh, question then. Uh, did you watch Coco? Do you know what? I watched it maybe three or four days ago and cried. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I love that film. Yes, I did. I watched it's, it in bed like a grandma. It, oh, it's so good though. I just, yeah, I get the crying thing. I've watched it a few times and every time I cry as if I expect something different to happen every time. Yeah. <laughs> Never does. Uh, can you name a traditional Halloween food? Ooh, um, well, toffee apples. And, and, and generally apples, like apple bobbing, I know is quite a traditional Halloween thing. Stephen, the next question I was going to ask you was what do you bob for at Halloween parties? So you get an extra point because you've actually answered a question oh, before I've asked it. And, pretty impressive. Uh, what other, uh, and roast bat. Yeah, we always, in the <laughs> butler house, we always eat roast bat at Halloween. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'll, I'll, um, yeah, sure, I'll give you that. Um, do you know... <laughs> where bobbing apples came from where it originated i think generally all of these are american pastimes aren't they was it the us did it start over there well you would think so but according to my my research and by that i mean google uh, ancient rome oh i did not know that there you go i learned something new I, I mean i didn't know that until i like i say i googled it and finally can you name me a famous vampire or famous monster Oh, yeah. Um, famous vampire, famous monster. Well, there's obviously Dracula, uh, Frankenstein. 
Um, oh, interesting fact for you. This is completely random. But did you know, I didn't know this, that the actress who played the bride of Frankenstein in the old horror movie with the mm-hmm. big hair was Katie Nana in the Mary Poppins film. <gasps> oh, no, that's the, the, a great fact. Yeah, the scary the scary nanny at the beginning of the film that walks out and leaves them is the bride of Frankenstein. <laughs> there you are. <laughs> Well, I feel like you've taught me something there as well, Stephen. <laughs> I know. Uh, that was incredible. You passed my Halloween test, obviously, with flying orange and black colours. So thank you very much for that. Uh, so we should say to everybody, uh, Nothing to See Here Hotel, Fiend of the Seven Sewers, is out right now. Is that correct? Yes, it's already out. So you can go and grab it. Awesome stuff. We'll be back with more in a mo from Stephen Butler. And I think before I forget, we need to find out what is Stephen's favourite childhood book? Uh, so, Stephen, tell me, what book have you picked for your favourite childhood story? I have picked, um, when I was a little boy, they're, they're quite scary, but I really loved them. I have picked Robin Jarvis's The Deptford Mice books. Um, and they don't sound very scary, but they're really creepy. And when I was a little boy, they used to, I used to read them under my duvet and, and then have to kind of throw the book across the room and go to sleep. Um, scared that I was going to be got by monsters because yes, it's about um, it's about a, a family of mice who live in a derelict house in Deptford in London, and there's a, a sewer grate in the basement that leads to the kingdom of the rats, and the rats are incredibly scary and horrible, and they worship a god called Jupiter who is a massive deformed cat in the sewers. <laughs> And it's really scary, and I used to love them. So yes, they're they're not massively well known, but if you if you have a Google, they're absolutely brilliant. So yeah, Robin Jarvis, the Deptford Mice books. It's a trilogy. Wow! When you said you'd picked a scary book, I thought you'd gone for Goosebumps, but you have gone off piece here. Oh yeah, and they're they're so good, and it it makes me in, in almost any any book thing I do, I always mention them because it makes me really angry that they're not more more like you know they're they're not they're not well known. So I'm on a I'm on a, a mission to get everyone reading Robin Jarvis books because all of his books are brilliant and slightly scary. I have never heard of this book series before. Um, so I say say if your tolerance like mine was was a little bit on the edge with scary books, do you reckon I could just about handle it? You could just about handle it. They're probably for eight to ten to twelve year olds. So they you know they're 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 top of mid grade and they are yeah they're quite scary. The rats have these weapons that they wear on their claws called mice peelers um, and they peel mice. <laughs> it's quite, it's quite scary, but it's good. They're really good adventures. They're, they're Indiana Jones quality adventures. Wow. What I, I mean, there's no higher praise than that. Uh, well, Stephen, thank you so much for sharing that with us. That is a great shout. The Deptford Mice. Uh, if you're looking for a scary book this Halloween, go and check it out. Fabulous. Thank you so much brilliant stuff hopefully you've enjoyed the podcast thank you so much for listening if you have rate review subscribe tell us all about it go read a book and i'll see you soon bye